This is the uh, the uh, the high enchilada, the big Kahuna, the Gibson Les Paul custom uh, seventy six model. This I've taken the um, scratch plate off at the moment. It tends to uh, come off or go back on, depending on what mood I'm in. If I'm feeling I'm in a bit of a slash type mood, it comes off. And then sometimes I think, oh, it looks so much better with that scratch plate on. Um, but there you go. This is. Uh, as you may have may have noticed, it's black, and the um, the binding has taken on a distinctly cream tinge. <laughs> Those come away, and the, the 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 binding underneath is 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 a, a kind of ivory white, and where the nitro stayed, it's taken on this yellow tinge. The the inside of the case is a kind of orangey colour, so I'm assuming that's why it's taken on this this really yellowish. Uh, it's got it's really nice aging effect, really. There's actually a few. Um, Anomalies about this, the, the, first of all, that, that roller bridge is not the original. The original bridge is in there, um, really sharp edges on that, so I'd, I'd put this with the roller um, the roller bridge in. Ergonomically much more comfortable to play, it doesn't dig in at all on this. Uh, it's nice to rest your uh, hand on the on that, that corner there. Um, I can put the, the old bridge on any time, it's still functional. Um, there is no tone controls on this guitar. Just disconnected them. Gibson Classic Fifty Seven, um, original T top. I had the guitar. I got the guitar in in um eighty four. I swapped it for for an Ibanez. The first electric guitar I bought was an Ibanez artist. Um. Flame top sunburst, it was a nice guitar. Well, as it was, but again, it will be. Oh, the force may change sometimes. To the sea. And I had a 
it for a couple of months and I went then I went down to the, the music shop which is quite near to me at the time and this was on the wall and I said can I ever go and he said you're not touching that so I went back again a few days later go on give us a go and he said okay so I sat and played it for half an hour and I thought this this is mine and uh so I, I'd, I mean, I was a kid at the time. I, I had a couple of hundred quid in the bank because I had a job as a, I was working a butcher shop. And I just spent a bit, a chunk of money actually getting hold of the Ibanez. So I said, I tell you what, I'll give you a hundred quid and, and my Ibanez for this. And he said, you've got no chance. So uh, I think we ended up, it was either 200 or 250 quid, 250 pounds, British pounds. Mm. Sterling of the realm, plus the Ibanez artist. So there you go. It's been mine ever since. I put these these new style of uh, see the knobs on with the, the the kind of serrated edge, much easier to uh, manoeuvre. Bit of a crack on there <laughs> to get some spray on that. So. Um, when I got it, I, as far as I was concerned at the time, there was two T tops in, in the um, in the guitar, uh, and I was playing. Um, I was playing a gig maybe five years ago, and I noticed this kind of weird feedback off the uh, off the bridge pickup. Uh, a kind of unpleasant, not really related to uh, the usual kind of controllable feedback you get when you when you're playing in you know in, in a gig situation or in a rehearsal situation so i i had an idea maybe it, it needs potting so i took the um took the pickup off took it down to a place near me called kgb which is a luthier's and asked them can you could you um Uh, wax pot this pickup for me and as I turned it over and I looked and it said DiMarzio on the back so there you go I don't know what happened to the original having said that the DiMarzio uh, sounds really good um, I changed it for this because it's a Gibson pickup and no, no other reason really but I really I really do like this classic 57 Um it's got really, I don't know whether you can see, it's got some really, really, it's, it's one of those, uh, the nickname is the Fretless Wonder. If you, if you see those frets, they're really wide and, and low. So, uh, I've changed the, uh, I've got proper strap lock uh, on there, I don't really like those things. Uh, and those tuners are lovely. Got Grovers on there. I think they're Grovers. Maybe. It actually says Gibson on them. History, the, uh, the the you know, kind of vintage Les Paul. 
our old bass player won't play anything unless it's got like a Rickenbacker or Fender on the headstock, you know, something of that nature. Um, Warwick, we play a Warwick. What else will he play? But the interesting thing is he's got a chord bass. And uh, yeah, so that was, what do you think of that? He got it just for, for practicing with while he was working away. He said, that's a lovely bass. I said, oh, okay. He said, but I wouldn't be seen dead with it on stage. <laughs> It's, um, I mentioned it's a 76, so it came from the, uh, it comes from the Norlin era. I, I, I don't know, some people, some people say it's, it's not, you shouldn't buy a, a Norlin uh, Gibson and some people say they, they were the best. Scott Grove says they're the best Gibsons you can get. And one thing I will say is that, with, with this, if you look at this Les Paul, see the volumes at the back of the air. Uh, Back of the headstock. So, there's you no know, Gibson is notorious for um, if you you know if you drop your Les Paul and they, they snap here and uh, people say once they've been repaired they're actually stronger than they were prior to the you know prior to the snap um, because of the the wood glue is stronger than the wood because there's actually not enough wood there really. So this one, this one has has been dropped a few times and actually didn't break, and it's, I think it's because of that. Um, this thing weighs a ton. I've weighed it a few times. I can't remember. It's something like um, fourteen pounds or something like that. So you need you need to use a wide strap when you're playing with this this Les Paul. <laughs> It's so fast, and the, the that's, you know the Gibson, the shorter scale length on a Gibson. Got to be careful, I think, because uh, you can you you can if it, like I use the the Washburn Idle a lot during gigs and rehearsals, and um, I use tens, and it's the same scale length. It's the Gibson scale length. Um, I, I I like the fight in the tens, so. This Les Paul carries nines, always has done. Uh, I, I quite often think I'm gonna I'm gonna just move over to tens and, and that's it, everything will be on tens. But um up to yet I haven't. So it, when you, you you know when you're playing certain things you can you can overbend. <laughs> you you need to be at, you need a light touch to move around a guitar. I tend to keep it nice and nice and light if I can. I use a thick pick as well. This one's a three, three millimetre, big chunky slab. And that's also quite light. The only thing with the, with the thick pick up is you can hear the, the, the interaction between the, the string and the uh, plectrum or the pick. For me, about the Gibson is the feel. Um, as much as anything, it, it's a, it's a nice sounding guitar. It's um, the word that, that that really sums it up is very smooth. Other than the weight, it's really it's really comfortable for um, um, just general play. The action is really low. I don't know whether you can see that. Um, because of those those fret, the fretless wonder those really low fret wide frets, it's such a it's such an easy guitar to play. Uh, it stays in tune really well, except there's a there's a little bit of a um, a nick out of the the nut on the G string. Uh, I think that's why the, the G the G is um, a little bit less stable. It probably needs an um, another nut. Well, it's been on there since I've owned the guitar, so. 
You can't beat a good bone nut. <laughs> that sounds like a song. Um, so it's really smooth, the bends are just effortless. <laughs> It's got that kind of, um, oh, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's a glorious sound really when, when it's, when it, when you, when you're in full flight with the, with the Gibson, it's, it's, it's a fantastic piece of kit. I liked it just as much with the, the DiMaggio. Gibson Les Paul Custom 1976, so on, um, I've nicknamed it Lucretia Borgia. A long story. <laughs> um, see you again, folks.